Good morning. My name is Dr. Megan Mustaine, and I have the privilege of serving as Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. It is my honor to preside over today's ceremonies. Please stand, if you are able, to receive the invocation delivered by the Reverend Alexander Cerna Wallander and remain standing for the national anthem sung by Mr. Fain. Friends, it is indeed a gift to be together. It is a gift to be in this place and it is a gift to mark this moment. We know that we cannot take these gifts for granted. And so in that spirit, I would invite you to join me in prayer. God of wisdom and hope, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for this moment and this day, for these graduates and their families and the generations that have led them here. We give thanks for the friends, mentors, and teachers that have guided them along the way. For we know that this journey has not been easy, and we hold now in the quiet of our hearts both the losses we carry and the moments of unexpected grace. Be with these graduates now, for this is no ordinary time. Guide them in this season of change, of reimagining, of renewal, and bless this threshold, this moment between what has been and what will be. Help them hold true to what they have learned, who they have become, and how they have grown. Mark this moment with wonder and joy as they continue on as part of the enduring Trinity family. For all of this we pray and hope. May it be so. May it be so. Amen. Welcome all, distinguished guests, friends, and family, on behalf of the trustees of Trinity University, our faculty, staff, and alumni, and on behalf of the class of 2022, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this spring 2022 commencement ceremony. It is so wonderful to see this beautiful chapel full again. We have all endured many challenges over the past few years, and to be able to come together today with friends and families to celebrate your amazing academic achievements is incredibly special. You all know Trinity Tigers are incredibly special. You have grit and resilience, determination and dreams, and today it is our honor to celebrate you. This is your day. Enjoy every moment of it. We are enormously proud of you. Now, please join me in greeting Dr. Anderson, Trinity University's 19th president. Thank you. Since 1869, learning has been Trinity's first enterprise. Today, we honor with diplomas our degree candidates' arrival at an important milestone in their own journey. 
Today's graduates did not make this journey alone, and we begin by recognizing important guides along the way. Will the representatives of the faculty and staff please stand so that we can salute you and your colleagues? Thank you. Will the representatives of the Board of Trustees please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Will all Trinity alumni stand and be recognized? Thank you. Estamos cerca de la frontera con México y me da honor reconocer a las familias de Trinity que hablan español. Nuestra fuerza reside en nuestra diversidad. Given our strategic location close to Mexico, we are proud to welcome the numerous Spanish-speaking families within our Trinity community. Our diversity is a strength. Our degree candidates know that family and friends and scholarship donors provided the encouragement, support, and sacrifice that have made this day possible. Degree candidates, will you please rise and join me in saluting everyone who made this day possible for you? Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, please be seated. You know, it's a real pleasure to be invited to offer comments today for your commencement. Uh, Trinity students, families, and friends savor this day. I love the pageantry of commencement. Even more, I love seeing your smiles, your laughter, the tears of joy as you mingle with your loved ones and your friends. The so-called social distance of the past few years remind us to savor these moments to the fullest. Many of you have probably thought about what it means to reach the end of your graduate school career. Paradoxically, we use the word commencement to mark this finish line. Commencement is a word that signals not an ending, but a beginning. This is a special graduation for me. It is my last as Trinity's president, and it is also a beginning for me. For you and for me, commencement marks the starting point of a new chapter in our lives. Our years together have had their own unique challenges, a novel and lingering global pandemic, a new unveiling of the urgent need for healing across partisan, racial, and ethnic divisions, historic winter freezes and snowstorms in South Texas, and now a disruptive war in Europe. We've used and overused certain words and phrases. I wonder what your list is. Mine is unprecedented, pivot, and you're on mute. <laughs> when I reflect on our shared experiences and I think about our beginnings today, I recall a comment from the Argentinian writer Jorge Luis Borges. A writer, and I believe generally all persons, must think that whatever happens to them is a resource. All things have been given to us for a purpose, and an artist must feel this more intensely. All that happens to us, including our humiliations, our misfortunes, our embarrassments, all is given to us as raw material, as clay, so that we may shape our art. Today, we begin to write a new chapter in our lives, and there are three key insights from the pandemic that can serve as raw material and resources for our life writing. First, if there is one thing that is certain in this world, paradoxically, it's uncertainty. Life is unpredictable. During the pandemic, we made decisions, lived our lives, found ways to forge ahead without sufficient data or full information. In reality, we have learned, what we have learned is that the fragile predictability we used to call certainty was never as certain as we believed. This paradoxical revelation may feel like a shock to our conceptual system, but there is an enormous liberation in understanding that we always live in the realm of calculated risks. Your graduate education at Trinity has prepared you to navigate whatever comes your way. Critical thinking, creative problem solving, compassionate commitments, and collaborative connections have developed your capacity to move forward with confidence. Draw upon your experiences as you explore complex situations. 
Apply the inspiration from faculty, staff, and alumni mentors as you confront the challenges you'll find. Use your successes and your failures as the raw material for creating meaning and purpose in your lives. Second, remember we always have a choice. Resilience in the wake of a pandemic and painful divisions emerges from choice. We choose how we see, interpret, speak about, and ultimately experience our reality. Our polarized world constantly invites us to be less than we are. Polarization invites us to shrink into roles of living as a victim, to live in the smallness of persecuting those we judge as the source of harm, or to self-righteously appoint ourselves as saviors, rescuing the victims we see all around us. This interlocking triangle of roles is as familiar as the air we breathe every moment. We all play them, yet they ultimately do nothing to change our systems or improve our world. To be clear, there are and there have been real victims of violence and injustice. At the same time, we are the ones who choose to identify with the limiting mentality of victimhood or choose to live as creators, agents capable of making real and lasting changes. There are real victims who choose not to live in a victimhood mentality. Instead, they choose to forge their own freedom. Like Borges suggests, we can choose to work with our experiences like the clay and artist shapes to create new meaning, new beauty. Third and finally, we always remember, you are enough. You've got this. We live in a world of comparisons that does not serve us well. Comparisons, challenges, and changes often make us feel like we're not enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not attractive enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have money enough. And most prevalent of all, I don't have time enough. You can all think of the countless ways you have experienced this kind of self-undermining comparison that generated stress during your graduate studies at Trinity, I'm sure. Spoiler alert, these kinds of self-generated and self-limiting comparisons don't disappear once you receive a diploma. The brusque changes caused by the pandemic made the situation worse because we all initially felt de-skilled, like we weren't enough to know how to get through a public health crisis. Here we are. We are enough. We've got this. Choose to take care of yourself, to love yourself, to honor your inherent worthiness. This is the first step toward empowering others as we strive together to create a better future. Today, we stand at a beginning. Your resiliency will serve you well as you embark on your next adventure. Our world thirsts for, for courageous individuals like you who can bring people together to solve the complex challenges before us. With confidence in the face of uncertainty, with the active choice to live as a creator, and with the self-awareness that you are enough, you've got this, your future will be bright. As you begin today, may you always experience full aliveness in the face of uncertainty. May you experience true freedom exercised through wise choices. And may you always feel the deep peace of your inherent dignity and worthiness. Be alive, be free, be at peace as you write a life of meaning and purpose. Class of 2022, we are proud of you. You are awesome. Congratulations. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in School Psychology please rise and remain standing? Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching please rise and remain standing? Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Accounting please rise and remain standing?
In addition to the candidates standing, there are candidates for the master's degree in absentia, whose names appear on the program. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty of Trinity University, I recommend these candidates for the master's degree. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, and in accordance with the provisions of the Charter of Trinity University, I confer upon those candidates who have met the graduation requirements established by the faculty, the master's degree for which they have been recommended with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Please be seated. Dr. Coltharp, Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, will present the master's candidates for academic degrees. The recipients of the master's degree will now come forward to be hooded and to be greeted by President Anderson, Dr. Mustaine, and Ms. Meyer, Chair of the Board of Trustees. Master of Arts in School Psychology, Jeffrey Viet Lay. Emma Marie McPeters. Siobhan Aslan Margaret Patterson. <laughs> he Ilani Mary Kala Aukahi Potemra. Talia Roshan Janae Sims. <laughs> Master of Arts in Teaching, Isabel Alondra Chavez. Selena Davila. <laughs> Lillian Elizabeth De La Rosa.
Michael Allen Fain. Mabel Elaine Fowler. <laughs> Ashley McCallie Gans. Kaylee Noel Ghent. <laughs> Brenda Giselle Guerra. Sarah Louise Hadzel. Lyric Blue Wilcox Johnson. <laughs> Michael Richard Johnston. Patsy Elise Longoria. <laughs> Christina Manning. Willa M. Rubin. <laughs> Victoria Lynn Shirey.
Jacqueline Eliana Valdez. Ava Camille Vicinelli. <laughs> Master of Science in Accounting, Shamsi Mohammed Alkaf. Gabriela Alejandra Amaya. Margot Dunnigan Brown. James Harley Dodd. <laughs> Efosa Nathan Ehemwinma. Danielle Joy Flaherty. <laughs> Juliana Abigail Flores. Justin Reed Gailey. <laughs> Sarah Christine Height. Jackson Christopher Hollinger. <laughs> Carmen Simone Johnson.
Cameron Maxwell Crimble. Anthony Dominic Malfitano. Stephen Matthew Molina. Natalie Elaine Northcutt. <laughs> Brianna Michaela Pena. Elizabeth Popoff. <laughs> Owen Thompson Rossi. Hunter Andrew Strucka. <laughs> Williston Thomas Brandreth Simons. Maxwell Charles Towers. <laughs> Jacob Montgomery Winchester. This concludes the presentation of degrees. Congratulations to you all. Congratulations to you all. More than half a century ago, during the first years of our Skyline campus, here in San Antonio, 
President Jim Lurie bid farewell to graduates each year with a challenge. His words hold true today, and I give you the same challenge. Graduates, of itself, your degree is no certain mark that you are an educated person. That will be revealed by what you do with what you are and what you have and what you know. True education translates knowledge into character and action. I look forward to seeing your true education translated into character and actions that will make a difference in our world. Let's give this group one more round of applause. To conclude these commencement exercises, I ask everyone to please stand and join Ms. Hadsel in the singing of the Trinity Alma Mater, the words of which are printed in your program. The benediction will follow and the recessional. Let the stage party and the graduates leave first. Uh, then all are invited to gather for a final time with faculty and friends on the esplanade. So friends, may you go forth, holding dear your journey here, knowing that you join Trinitonians of every generation in shaping the future that will be. So may you be blessed. May you be blessed in all that you do. May you be blessed in all that you are. May you be blessed with lives rich in meaning and full of purpose. Now, may we all go in peace to love and serve the world. Amen. Amen.